Good evening, folks. This video is what many have asked for, but I doubt it will put many minds at ease. The magnetic poles are shifting, the field is weakening, the sun will micronova, and the world leaders do not seem to care about anyone but themselves. If you are new here, please check out the validation of these concepts in the video playlist link below. It has all the papers and corroborating observations. This is just an advanced concept video that comes for those who have already done their homework. When this happens, the global electricity grids will go out and most of you know that we will have chaos in the cities. Don't get stuck in a populated area when things go wrong. Most of you know the importance of stockpiling food, water, seeds, pre-industrial tools, weapons, and clothes that will allow you to survive the weather in your area when you can't rely on power. But of course, the scariest and most deadly impact to the biosphere is the Great Deluge, the continental level tsunamis. We believe the crust unlocks and shifts. Others believe it is mantle heaving and land rising and falling that causes the great waves, but whichever way it goes, the evidence of the cycling inundation remains. So how big will they be? Where will it stay dry? Here are the maps based on the expected crustal shift and where the inertia will force the oceans over the land, plus where the water will slosh back almost equally. We'll start with the United States. We will have to qualify these flood maps because they are programmed based on sea level rise, not tsunamis from specific directions, but it is useful to a certain degree, as we'll see. So I set the water height to the absolute minimum that would have been needed to get the oceans through the Rockies last time. That happened when we shifted and tilted back the opposite way in this round. This region goes south, which means the water will be coming what we currently call north, and it looks like this. Now, here's the qualification. The blue throughout larger portions of Canada may not be right in the tsunami model, even though it is how this sea level change program is designed. But for the eastern United States and central United States, it's pretty darn accurate. It shows you why the parts of the Appalachians that we call quasi-survivable require you to either be floating away or running to a few select mountain peaks and then hoping you can survive afterwards when your preparations down below are likely washed away. Is it possible high parts of Michigan or Canada here could avoid the oceans and Gulf of Mexico? Maybe, but then there's the Great Lakes and the Hudson Bay. Again, this is not a tsunami program, it's just sea level rise, but it should make clear just how different the Rockies are compared to the eastern side of the continent. I went ahead and took that back down here and showed what the Arctic slosh back is likely to be up north, along with the Hudson Bay, taking out the portion about the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic coming north. And at the bottom, you can see the outpouring of the Great Lakes as well, just for your visual. Obviously, many of these white areas here are populated or a major challenge to live in without power when it gets cold, but there you go. Europe up next. Ouch. I actually made this one a bit lower of an ocean rise because it was too depressing to look at otherwise. The Arctic slosh back is actually the worst of it in this region. And by the way, again, this is my happy version, the optimistic estimation. It could be much, much worse. It kind of speaks for itself. And considering the population density and the wintry conditions in some of these high points, this is why I say Europe scares me. Oceania up next, and actually this really doesn't do a good job of showing the risk to Indonesia or Papua. The water inertia will have run-up effects and there actually won't be as much white zones there in reality. It's just what we got with this program. Australia and New Zealand are pretty darn accurate. New Zealand, though, has major quake and volcano risk, just like Indonesia and Papua. Most of this map is about the slosh back rather than the initial inertial wave, but India, the populated regions of China, Japan, it's pretty accurate, not to mention the Arctic coming back in the inertial wave. Japan, it is notable that all the high spots are either populated or volcanoes, and the earthquakes there are going to be brutal. Look at the mountain range, though, from the northeast running all the way through the Middle East, probably much higher than many of us realize if we live just on the western side of the world. Africa and South America have major issues with the flatness of huge portions of the continents and the run-up potential, like a spill-in scenario. It's the opposite of the Rockies where the highly elevated and outside of the direction of the water inertia regions are not the case here. Even regions not in the direct direction of the inertia are highly vulnerable simply because of the water rise around them. Would it be better to have a tsunami model rather than a sea level rise model? Yeah, obviously, but alas, this is a helpful visualization, I think. Again, new viewers, do not just trust, 
do your homework, watch the playlist. I put all the verification papers and observations in there. I will see you in the morning for the daily show. Be safe, everyone.